Have you ever noticed that the opening theme from Stranger Things sounds eerily similar to the opening theme from The X-Files? What if I move the X-Files theme into the same key as Stranger Things? Admittedly, the two themes aren't that similar, but they do have a fair few things in common. For starters, both themes are built around a repeating arpeggio figure. But the similarities actually go deeper than just that. Let's take a look at Stranger Things first. The arpeggio is outlining the notes of a C major 7 chord, and it continues to do this throughout the entire track. However, the notes in the bass actually change how we perceive this chord. At this point, we get a big, bold E note in the bass. But how can having a different note in the bass change how we hear a chord? Well, it's because C major 7 and E minor flat 6 have the exact same notes. Because the two chords are comprised of the exact same notes, it comes down to the context and the voicing of the chord to decide how our ears will perceive it. So when we get this big dominating E note underneath the C major arpeggio, it actually recontextualizes our ears to hear it as an E minor flat six instead. So that's what's happening in Stranger Things, but what about in the X-Files opening theme? Like I said before, X-Files is also built around a repeating arpeggio. And what chord is being arpeggiated? E minor flat 6. The exact voicing of the X-Files arpeggio is actually found within the Stranger Things arpeggio. So is this some sort of conspiracy? No. Did Stein and Dixon rip off the X-Files theme? Well, probably not, but they might have been inspired by it. In fact, in an interview with Classical NPR, Stein and Dixon, who wrote the music for Stranger Things, said that they chose to use the Prophet VS synth to get a very mysterious X-Files-like sound. But why do both TV themes use this particular type of chord? Well, because this chord has a particularly spooky tension building quality, and it all comes down to the flat 6. The flat 6 is only a semitone away from the 5th, and therefore it creates a tense dissonance as the two notes rub against each other. In fact, when you play the notes of this chord all at once, it can sound quite jarring. So this is why I think that both Stranger Things and X-Files use this chord as an arpeggio. By staggering the notes of the chord rather than playing them all at once, we still get a good helping of that semitone dissonance, but without it being too overwhelming. Harnessing the dissonance of a semitone interval is a classic horror or suspense technique, for example in this classic. Michael Stein, who is half of the duo who created the Stranger Things music, said that the show's producers actually asked for the theme to have a Jaws-like suspense. It's no secret that the soundtrack for Stranger Things is one big love letter to the synth music of the late 70s and 80s. You just have to listen to Tangerine Dream or John Carpenter to hear where the Stranger Things duo got a lot of their ideas.
The music of Stranger Things does an amazing job of harnessing the sounds and atmospheres of these influences without just being a boring pastiche. The music feels new and original, and yet nostalgic at the same time, just like the show itself. And thank you as always to all of my amazing supporters on Patreon who allow this channel to continue existing. If you're interested in seeing more videos from me, a few dollars a month can make a big difference, and you can get all sorts of perks in return, including exclusive vlogs and voting on future video topics. Three dollars a month will get you on this amazing list of people, and five dollars a month will get you on this amazing list of people, including Andre Sainz Diarja, Andrew Brown, Andy Deacon, Austin Barrett, Bob McKinstry, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, Daniel Long, Daryl, Darren Harvey, David Diffendifer, David Efford, David Spaulding, F. D. Hodor, George Taylor, Golf House, James Ko, J. A. Cockensparger, Joe Wasson, Melody Composer Squared, Nancy Gillard, Orlando Bernard, Patrick Gonzalez, Paul Paisel, Peter Dunthy, Roger Yun, Roger Clay, T. Newport, and Tim Beaker.